Um, I thought to, today I would just uh, briefly touch on a couple of things that are going on in Washington. You may have noticed a few things uh, <laughs> lately. And, uh, but try to leave most of the time, and we have until what time? Nine. Four, nine. Uh, for Q&A. So I thought that that might be the, the best thing to do. First thing is that uh, not everything you read and watch about Washington is actually true. We are not at each other's throats every minute of the day, only part of the time, but it's not, it is not all the time. And I have been part of what's called the Problem Solvers Caucus, 24 Democrats, 24 Republicans in the House. We meet with a group, similar group in the Senate. In fact, we just met oh, about 10 days ago, seven days ago, about uh, the immigration issue that we're now confronting. We had 54 re uh, Republican and Democrat senators and House members in one room in the Senate Russell Building talking about the DACA issue and how we would go forward on immigration. Uh, we have also worked uh, with the problem solvers. We've put forth a proposal on dealing with health care in the aftermath of the failed effort to uh, repeal the ACA. Uh, we've put forward a bipartisan effort that deals with specific issues, and I've talked to Dave Scarpino and others about these issues many, many times, specific issues of how do we improve the individual market for health insurance, and how do we provide greater certainty for businesses, especially small business employers, in terms of what their costs are going to be, because this has been the biggest cost driver for businesses. Um, I've been working on the Agriculture Committee on the Farm Bill. This is a vitally important uh, piece of legislation that happens once every four years. And we anticipate we'll be working in the House passing a bill sometime by early March. This is critically important to our dairy industry. Uh, I've toured, uh, as a member of the Agriculture Committee, I've toured uh, the agricultural producers, uh, dairy people, farmers, organic uh, specialty crops, yogurt manufacturers, cheese makers, uh, milk producers, all throughout our district. We have one of the largest organic industries in the whole country in the 19th Congressional District, which is, as Ward mentioned, is a big district. It stretches from the Vermont line in northern, in Ren northern Rensselaer County to down in Deposit in Sanford in, in uh, Delaware and Broome counties on the Pennsylvania border. So it's an enormous district. It's bigger than the state of Connecticut. And all throughout our district, there are numerous organic farms and organic farm operations. One of the pieces that I've sponsored uh, as legislation would be a, is a bill that will provide greater certainty to consumers and agricultural uh, business people that the products that are labeled organic truly are. And this is something that's really concerned because you can get a premium for organic products. And yet there are a lot, there are a lot of instances that we've uncovered where uh, agricultural materials labeled or agricultural products labeled organic coming in from places like the Ukraine through Turkey are actually the manifest gets changed mysteriously in the port and what was grown conventionally it becomes labeled organic and this is a real fraud on the American consumer and the American uh, taxpayer so what we're going to do is boost the uh, resources of the YAG department uh, I've already gotten assurances we're going to put this in the farm bill. And this will be a good thing for us and for our producers because we have, we have the largest number, certainly in the Northeast, of organic farms in the country in our district. So it's really important. Uh, transportation. I serve on transportation. We are waiting for the president's proposal on infrastructure. We anticipate this is going to come right around the State of the Union address, which is next week. Um, I have offered a couple of plans, one which would allow sovereign wealth funds and pension funds to invest in a lending product that could be used to create more capital for municipalities and state governments to borrow uh, at a cheap source of funding, but tapping a new market for funding, because there are a lot of sovereign wealth funds internationally and pension funds that want to have a safe harbor here in the United States and want to invest in our infrastructure projects. So it's just one component of an entire idea. The whole thing here is water and sewer and bridges and tunnels and broadband in rural underserved areas. And this is really the most critical, uh, one of the most critical things that we have to deal with. Lastly, uh, on the Budget Committee, and you, you may have noticed that the government shut down over the last weekend. This was a monumental uh, farce, I can tell you. We sat around uh, Saturday and Sunday, and we knew 
that this thing was all going to come to a close on Monday. The, the, the box canyon that Senator Schumer and the Senate Democrats got themselves into is identical to the box canyon that Ted Cruz and some Republican senators got themselves into in 2013. We should never allow a non-financial, non-budget issue to be uh, used as holding hostage the funding of the United States government. I will never, as your member of Congress, vote to shut down the government, especially over an issue that is not related to the funding of the government. So here, what happened? Over the weekend, 15 reserve Marine battalions had to skip their drill because of the shutdown. Uh, we were telling, we, had, we were hearing from uh, families of military personnel, are we going to get paid? My husband is abroad. I am, are we going to be able to survive because of this? We had um, agencies like the VA not being able to process, telling us they were not going to process veteran disability applications. So the, the range and the issue when you shut down the government, you cost the taxpayers more money. And it was always a mistake. I'm very hopeful that now we have, we're back on track, we can get an agreement on DACA. And this is the last thing I want to say initially before your questions. What is the issue with the deferred action for childhood arrivals that we're facing? These were, this was an order that the Department of Homeland Security issued in 2012, right after the November election. And what it said was that we were not going, the country was not going to process against anyone who may have been brought here as a minor child by their parents or they came under other circumstances. It was called deferred action for childhood arrivals. What does that mean? It means that we were deferring it temporarily. Well, President Trump looked at it and said, five years in, we've got to come to a decision. So he said, last year, give the Congress until sometime in March, I believe it's March 5th, for us to come up with a solution to this. Now, how do you pass something in the House? And I'm a co-sponsor of about three different bills on this question with Republicans and Democrats. How do you pass something in the House? Because the far left really, I think, wants this as an issue, and the far right doesn't want to do anything at all. But there is, I believe, a consensus where there'd be approximately 300 votes in the House to pass a bill. So what's necessary to pass a bill, get the consensus in the House and the Senate, and also get the President to sign? We have to combine dealing with DACA, which means, in essence, saying that those who came here illegally as children, no fault of their own, who know nothing but the United States, who haven't committed a crime, should be put on a, an, a process where their status is normalized and legalized. They would eventually be eligible for a green card, and eventually they'd be eligible for citizenship. The bipartisan Senate Democrats and Republicans came up with a plan that would say anywhere between 10 and 12 years would get to citizenship. It would, it's a long time for a lot of these folks, but it's also a necessary uh, concession in order to get a bipartisan consensus to pass something. So when they went down to the White House and they, they sat down with President Trump, bipartisan Senate and, uh, uh, and House Republicans and Democrats, they agreed to four things. One, they would deal with DACA in kind of the way I've broadly explained here. Two, they will deal with border security. Three, they'll deal with the issue of the diversity lottery, which now 50,000 people come into the country a year simply by basis of picking their business card out of Ward Todd's bowl here. I mean, that's literally what they do around, around the world. And it is widely uh, viewed on both sides that this is not an effective means of choosing whether someone has the skills and the ability to, to come in and contribute to our country. And fourth, the issue of family reunification or what is sometimes called chain migration. The senators and the president and the congressmen who went down there all agreed that we would have a, a immigration bill that dealt with those four things. Now, I would like to do some other things, but that's not possible in this. I think even though you hear the rhetoric back and forth, but Trump and Schumer and, and other folks on the right and left, I think ultimately we're going to come down to a proposal that will encompass those four principles. And I think that's something that actually you can pass. See, I have a funny notion about going to Washington. I think people want us to get things done, not just talk past each other, and not just be in this 
in these uh, uh, circular loops where the left watches MSNBC and they read their blog items and their periodicals and the right watches Fox and they read the stuff that they read and they never talk to each other. Well, that's something that I just think is a waste of time. I did not go to Congress to waste time and to not get things done. So I do believe that we're on the threshold of be able, being able to get this done. It is certainly my hope and expectation. Uh, and the last thing I will say, and I said I would, that DACA would be the last thing, is that it's very important, I think, for the country to understand that while all this stuff is going on and we live in this Kardashianized society where people have 10 second attention spans and we focus on reality TV, we're missing a big impending titanic that iceberg that is, that is uh, affecting and, and impending, uh, it's going to affect our country uh, in the near future. And that is, by 2027, our national debt, which is now 20 trillion, by 2027, the national debt is going to be 29 trillion under current law, before the tax cut, before anything else, before that, uh, the $100 billion in emergency spending for the hurricanes and the fires and the floods and the mudslides that we're dealing with, before any of that, it's going to be $27 billion, $29 billion trillion, $29 trillion. For those that are counting, and Cheryl or Bill can probably help us with this. And congratulations, <laughs> Cheryl, on, on your, your new job. That's great. And, and, and so $29 trillion is $29,000 billion. It's impossible to get your arms around those numbers. If we allow our country to go that deeply in debt on the automatic pilot that is now on in terms of our spending trajectory, we will spend more in 2029, 2027, we will spend more on interest on the debt over 700 billion a year than we spend on national defense. This will be an incredible burden that we're gonna to stick to our children and grandchildren. And it is simply not possible for us to sustain the trajectories that we're on as a country. And this is a bipartisan problem. And so uh, we're working on the budget committee. We're going to go back at it again this year to try to bring more public attention and to get focus on this because without public buy-in, you can never begin to solve this problem. And so it really is a pleasure for me to, to be here today. Um, I really look forward to your questions, and I think my opening remarks were short enough, so we have a lot of time for questions. So Ward, Mr. Radio Voice himself, he can, he can lead us uh, in the questions. Ward. Any questions for the congressman? Hello? Behind me? Yes, please sing. Yes. Hi, Congressman. Lisa Morris, Federal Credit.